it's not enough to simply eliminate the negatives of wild living. Drought, evading predators, weather extremes, etc. Eliminating the negatives only makes something neutral, empty. We need to make captivity a rewarding, worthwhile experience for our pet reptiles. According to assessing the importance of natural behavior for animal welfare, animal welfare is not quality of life as dictated by humans, but as perceived by the animal in question. Their needs are not restricted to food, water, and shelter. The freedom and opportunity to exercise natural or wildlife behaviors is also an important part of welfare. This is supported by David Mellor's 2016 paper, which expanded on the five freedoms of animal welfare to create the five provisions and animal welfare aims. These natural behaviors are what we are stimulating with enrichment. It is how we fill the gap created by the absence of negative environmental factors and make keeping reptiles in captivity a positive, more ethical practice. Natural behavior is behavior that animals tend to perform under natural conditions because it is pleasurable and promotes biological functioning. This excludes the negatively motivated, defensive, aggressive, and fearful behaviors that we're already trying to discourage. Although the definition of pleasure for a reptile is still a bit sketchy, although Lori Torini did mention that they do have dopamine, a pleasure hormone, and the, her recent interview with the Animals at Home podcast, if you find the word pleasure difficult to think about in the context of reptiles, this can be interchanged with the term reward and have the same meaning. Reptiles with regular access to enrichment in captivity are more likely to be more alert, more engaged in their surroundings, and physically more fit, which can positively affect long-term health. There are two primary types of enrichment for animals. Environmental enrichment, which gives them something to explore, and enrichment activities, which gives them a challenge. Environmental enrichment is about how an animal's enclosure is laid out. Adding enrichment value to an enclosure means going beyond the basic necessities of food, water, and shelter. Look at your current living space. Most likely, you've filled it with things to keep you entertained and help prevent boredom, and to increase your comfort. Technically, a bare house with a functional kitchen, bathroom, bed, working plumbing, and a stocked fridge will keep you alive, and probably moderately comfortable as well. But what did you fill your home with? Books? Video games? A TV? A couch? Exercise equipment? A computer? All of these things are not really necessary for survival, but they help humans thrive but by providing ways for us to satisfy our instincts and fill up our free time. Think of it as human enrichment. Similarly, give your lizard ways to satisfy his or her instincts. Give them things to explore. Give them options, such as multiple hides, you know, like logs, plants with dense foliage, underground burrows, that kind of thing. Exer encourage them to exercise burrowing behavior with deep natural substrate, like sand, soil, and leaf litter. Provide climbing options, like branches, hammocks, and well-secured rock stacks. Changing up your lizard's enclosure every once in a while can also be a good form of environmental enrichment. I heard of somebody who does this daily for her bearded dragon, which might be a bit excessive, but you do get the idea. You can also create an out-of-enclosure play area full of items for your lizard to explore and interact with, including food treats. In some cases, supervised free roaming around your home may be appropriate. When you're trying to come up with enrichment ideas, one question you can ask yourself is, how can I make life harder for my reptile? Now, this may seem cruel, but teaching your reptile to overcome challenges will make them smarter, more alert, more engaged with their environment, fitter, and just plain more fun to have. The key is to start simple and gradually make it more complex as your lizard learns. Recently, I've started using small glass Pyrex containers with my oscillated skinks at feeding time. The skinks can see the bugs from the side of the container and from below, but they have to figure out how to get in if they want the food prize. And then once they're in, they have to figure out how to get out, because while the glass is good at keeping bugs in, it also presents a challenge for those tiny little legs. Here's another example. 
I found a woven cat toy at the pet store, and if I put a large dubia roach inside of it, my blue tongue skink is forced to work for his snack. As he grabs the ball and rolls it around, eventually the roach will fall out or climb out and he gets his prize. Puzzle feeders designed for dogs and cats can be great. I've seen videos of large lizards in particular using them quite successfully. But if that's too complicated for your lizard right now, no sweat. Try hiding or scattering food around the enclosure to simulate foraging. You can even use household junk like cardboard tubes, shipping boxes, plastic bags, stinky old t-shirts, whatever. My skinks love stinky things. They love shed skin from my snakes or maybe a used sock even. I don't see what they see in it, but they like it, so it works. Do beware, however, of ingestion hazards. And I'll say more about that in a minute. Here are some tips for success with lizard enrichment. Don't repeat the same old things over and over. Eventually, they will lose their enrichment value. Enrich according to your lizard's individual and species-specific capabilities. For example, my bearded dragon Deliora had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which reduced her ability to move around. So I simplified her enclosure far more than I typically recommend for a bearded dragon. On the other end of the spectrum, you have my Maruki blue tongue skink, who is an unusually proficient climber. So I try to give him climbing opportunities whenever possible, such as having him climb up the mesh lining of my laundry basket. When you're struggling for ideas, Zoo Snippets has a really cool enrichment diversity web. And you can use this to brainstorm enrichment activity ideas for your lizard. And by the way, that site has tons of helpful content on the basics of enrichment training and exhibit design. Finally, never do something that isn't safe for your lizard. Zoo Snippets provides this checklist. Always make sure that your lizard can't entrap itself or its body parts in the enrichment item, get the enrichment item stuck in its mouth, hang themselves from the enrichment item, ingest or choke themselves with pieces of the enrichment item, cut or wound themselves on the enrichment item, or use the enrichment item to escape from the enclosure. And of course, all enrichment items should never have the potential to cause disease or be toxic or irritating. A great way to provide environmental enrichment while better meeting your reptile's basic husbandry requirements is to look to nature for inspiration. Coming up next, Pete Hawkins talks about the importance of wild replication for pet reptiles and amphibians. Over the past few years, whilst creating my Facebook reptile network groups, I came up with my own little motto, my own little logo. And I chose this motto because I feel that's how we should be keeping our reptiles and amphibians in this 